This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Dave Colleen. I'm the rector or senior pastor here at St. John's Episcopal Church in Tallahassee, Florida. We want to welcome you here to this time of worship. We have a saying here at St. John's that wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are welcome here. So welcome to this service. I want to invite you at home to please stand, and I want you to sing our opening hymn loud enough so that your neighbors can hear. Please stand, and let's joyfully sing together. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And blessed be his kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Dear friends in Christ, the Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, you have given your only Son to be for us a sacrifice for sin and also an example of godly life. Give us grace to receive thankfully the fruits of his redeeming work and to follow daily in the blessed steps of his most holy life. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name, Alleluia. Praise, praise, praise the Lord. Praise God's holy name, Alleluia. 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 the book of Genesis. Joseph could no longer control himself before all those who stood by him. And he cried out, send everyone away from me. So no one stayed with him when he made himself known to his brothers. And he wept so loudly that the Egyptians heard it and the household of Pharaoh heard it. Joseph said to his brothers, I am Joseph. Is my father still alive? 
But his brothers could not answer him, so dismayed were they at his presence. Then Joseph said to his brothers, come closer to me. And they came closer. He said, I am your brother Joseph, whom you sold into Egypt. And now do not be distressed or angry with yourselves because you sold me here. For God sent me before you to preserve life. For the famine has been in the land these two years, and there are five more years in which there will be neither plowing nor harvest. God sent me before you to preserve you for a remnant on earth and to keep alive for you many survivors. So it is not you who sent me here, but God. He has made me a father to Pharaoh and Lord of all his house and ruler over all the land of Egypt. Hurry and go up to my father and say to him, Thus says your son Joseph, God has made me Lord of all Egypt. Come down to me, do not delay. You shall settle in the land of Goshen, and you shall be near me, you and your children and your children's children, as well as your flocks, your herds, and all that you have. I will provide for you there, since there are five more years of famine to come, so that you and your household and all that you have will not come to poverty. And now your eyes and the eyes of my brother Benjamin can see that it's, it is my mouth that speaks to you. You must tell my father how greatly I am honored in Egypt and all that you have seen. Hurry and bring my father down here. Then he fell upon his brother Benjamin's neck and wept after Benjamin while Benjamin wept upon his neck and he kissed all his brothers and wept upon them and after that his brothers talked with him the word of the Lord thanks be to God reading from the Gospel of Matthew. Jesus left that place and went away to the district of Tyre and Sidon. Just then, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and started shouting, Have mercy on me, Lord, son of David. My daughter is tormented by a demon. But he did not answer her at all. And his disciples came and urged him, saying, Send her away, for she keeps shouting after us. He answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. He answered, It is not fair to take the children's food and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, Woman, great is your faith. Let it be done for you as you wish. And her daughter was healed instantly. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. At this time, I would like to invite the children to gather around their device, their TV set, for our children's homily time. Boys and girls, it is so good to see you on this summer Sunday. I know some of you have gone back to school. Some of you are still waiting to go back to school. We're kind of in that process right now of connecting all of these dots. Maybe you've played that game. When I was your age, I loved connecting the dots. Maybe you started with one, a dot little over here, and then you'd follow it to two and three and four. And before you, if you looked down at that page, you could see something beautiful take shape, like a, a starfish or maybe an ice cream cone. When you first started, you couldn't tell what it was, but when you connected all of the dots, suddenly everything became clear. You could see that starfish or the ice cream cone. Well, friends, I want us to be thinking together about our story from the Old Testament today, the book of Genesis. That word Genesis means beginnings the beginnings of the world, to the beginnings of God's people. And you'll remember last week, Joseph, surrounded by all of his brothers, Joseph was thrown into a pit by his own brothers. They got into a big fight. And so I want you to think of that story kind of like a dot and connect the dots. It's one little moment in this big picture. So Joseph is thrown down on the pit, and he was very scared, and then he went off to Egypt, and there he was doing pretty well, but then he got falsely accused. Someone lied and said that he did a crime, but he didn't do it, and so he was put in prison. So that was another dot on his journey, not a very happy one. But then remember, Joseph is a dreamer. Remember he had that dream that his brothers and his parents would bow down and serve him. Well, he wasn't just a good dreamer. He could tell people what dreams meant. And so the king, Pharaoh, had a bad nightmare. And he wanted to know what his dream was all about. And so Joseph told the king. Joseph told Pharaoh what this dream meant. And because of that, he was lifted up. It was a, a good moment for Joseph. Another dot on his journey where the picture was becoming just a little bit more clear. And then Joseph's brothers had a, a journey all the way to Egypt where he was in order to find food. And it gave them a chance to say sorry to each other. For the brothers to say sorry to Joseph for throwing him in a pit. And for Joseph, it was a chance to offer forgiveness, to say, it's okay. And boys and girls, it's one of the most beautiful moments in the whole Bible. Joseph and Joseph's brothers held each other. They gave each other a big hug. And what we see by the end of the book of Genesis is we see that whole picture like the starfish or the ice cream cone. We can see what it all, how it all comes together for good because God is always working for good to bring us together in closer connection, just like those dots, closer connection with God and each other. Amen. When he was a boy, he preached to his chickens. 
You heard me right. When he was a boy, he preached to his chickens. He would assemble the faithful on Sunday mornings. He called them to worship. He read stories from the Bible, and then he preached. He proclaimed that old, old story of God's saving love to his chickens. Well, he kept at it. In time, he gathered people around him, and as he gathered them, he unified them. He made them more strong. They walked together. As a young man, he gathered the faithful around him on the Edmund Pettus Bridge in Selma. And so I want you to Picture this with me this morning. There he stands tall, even as a man swings a baton and cracks his skull open. Along with many others, he bleeds and he staggers. But somehow, he kept on moving, kept on walking forward. He walked forward all the way to the halls of Congress. And as a congressman, he stood tall. He never forgot that he was the son of sharecroppers who used to preach to his chickens. And he embraced you, even if you were from a different political party, different age, different background. He embraced you across the aisle. He mentored so many young leaders, bringing up that next generation so that they could take their place. He kept on gathering the faithful, united, strong, walking and working together. During his funeral held recently, the horse-drawn caisson bearing his body, it came to a complete stop. I'm sure many of you saw this on TV. That horse-drawn cart carrying his casket came to a complete stop for a moment of silence in the very center of the Edmund Pettus Bridge. And there they paused. They paused on ground hallowed by his and many others' witness. Rose petals strewn on the road, a reminder of the blood that had been shed, but also of the fruit of justice and peace. In a letter that was published soon after his death, a letter that he wrote to you and to me, and to our nation and the world. He had this to say. He said, in my life, I have done all that I can to demonstrate that the way of peace, the way of love and nonviolence is the more excellent way. Now, it is your turn to let freedom ring. It's your turn to let freedom ring. John Lewis's life, like any human life, is a series of moments, soaring highs, painful lows, and many ordinary Tuesdays in between. But when you begin to connect those dots, you begin to discern a pattern, a meaning, a purpose. And you begin to see that God was there the whole time connecting those dots. It's true for John Lewis. It's true for Joseph and his brothers, for Jesus and the Canaanite woman, for you and for me. God connects those dots. And what we need to do is pause and reflect to see how they come together in a meaningful whole. I'm not going to spend too much time on Joseph. You heard about him in the children's homily. But you have those four major moments, the the pit, and then he's sold into slavery in Egypt, and then he goes into the pit again in prison, but then he interprets Pharaoh's dreams. He He rises up from that, a soaring high, where he becomes a chief of staff. 
His leadership gifts are recognized. And then finally, the most important moment of Joseph's life, where he doesn't stand over his brothers. He stands beside them and he holds them. They reconcile. And so if you connect the dots of Joseph's life, you'll meet a God who has been there all along, a God who guided Joseph and his brothers, a God who nursed them and gave them food for the journey, a God who brought them together in the end of the story in a moment of profound healing, a moment of profound grace. I think that's why Joseph gets so emotional. Did you notice that today in our Old Testament story? Everyone's emotional. You don't always see that type of emotion in the Bible, but they break down, and as it says in Scripture, they weep upon each other's necks. And for Joseph and his brothers, I suspect it has more to do with a recognition that God has been a part of their lives the whole way through. In the low moments, in the high moments, all of those moments In between, God has been there the whole time. This is exactly what the Canaanite reminds Jesus of. She tells Jesus, she helps him to remember three important moments, or more specifically, three important people in his family tree. And it all starts with a simple phrase. She says, Lord, have mercy upon me and my daughter who is tormented by these demons. Bring healing into the life of my family. And then she uses a phrase that's really important. She says, son of David. So it begins with an acknowledgement of Jesus' authority. Lord, now remember, she's a Gentile but she understands Jesus' authority. And it's a type of authority that is not lorded over others. Think of Joseph standing over his brothers and saying that one day you're going to bow down and you're going to serve me. It's not that type of authority. It's where your brothers and sisters stand by your side and you embrace them in humble service. So she understands that Jesus wields authority creatively, for healing, for abundant life. So she calls him Lord. And then she says, have mercy. She's deeply aware of her need for God in the the way that you and I need to be aware of our need for healing, our need for God. She says, we're hurting. My daughter is hurting. We're desperate. Jesus, we need your help. She doesn't pretend that she can go it alone. She says, we need help. And that is something that brings us together as humanity as we stand equally in need of God's power and God's peace. But it's that last part of what she says that on the surface of things, it doesn't look that important, but it's really, really important to dig into a little today. She says, son of David. Well, what's going on there? She's reminding Jesus of her family tree. And her family tree, remember, she's a Canaanite, she's a Gentile. Her, Jesus, she reminds Jesus that his family tree contains three Canaanite women Rahab, Tamar, Ruth, all of them a part of Jesus' family tree. And so what she's saying to Jesus is connect the dots here with me. God's mercy is for every human being because God's love is bigger than any tribe, any language, any religion, any gender, any race. You name the category because God's in the business of connecting us all to God and each other. And so, friends, in the coming week, I want you to breathe deeply of the Spirit of God, and I want you to hit the pause button, 
And I want you to really make some time this week to reflect on how God is connecting the dots in your own life. The highs, the lows, all of those ordinary Tuesdays in between. I want you to be thinking about moments where God has been especially present to you on your journey. Times where you knew that you were standing on holy ground. And I also want you to think back to moments where God has felt absent from your life and from the life of those around you. I want you to be thinking about how God has shown up or possibly not shown up for you during this time of pandemic. I want you to take that time this week to look back on your spiritual journey to see how God connects all of the dots in our lives. And as you begin to connect those dots, I believe with all my heart that you will begin to see how God has been with you the whole way. The same God who was with John Lewis, Joseph and his brothers, Jesus and the Canaanite woman, because in Jesus, God is always gathering us close, just like Joseph says to his brothers today, come closer to me. God gathers us close, and he walks with us across every bridge of alienation until we come together to that promised land of justice and peace. Amen. I'd like to invite you at home to stand if you're able and join me in praying the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. In peace, we pray to you, Lord God. For all people in their daily life and work, for our families, friends, and neighbors, and for those who are alone. For this community, the nation, and the world, for all who work for justice, freedom, and peace. For the just and proper use of your creation, for the victims of hunger, fear, injustice, and oppression. For all who are in danger, sorrow, or any kind of trouble. For those who minister to the sick, the friendless, and the needy. For the peace and unity of the Church of God, for all who proclaim the gospel and all who seek the truth. For Michael, our presiding bishop, John, Charles, and Dorsey, our bishops, 
and all other bishops and ministers, for all who serve God and his church, for the special needs and concerns of this congregation, remembering Julia Livingston, Lucia Quintiliani, Sherry Arrington, Gertrude, Charlie Head, Linwood Arnold, Margaret Pendleton, Anita Goog, Bob Flanagan, E. Burke Jolly, Candy Williams, Doug Smith, Sissy Petrandis, Danny Goog, and all those affected by the COVID-19 pandemic. Hear us, Lord, for your mercy is great. We thank you, Lord, for all the blessings of this life. We will exalt you, O God, our King, and praise your name forever and ever. Remembering Stephen Mitchell, John Andrew Smith, and Francis Malone, we pray for all who have died that they may have a place in your eternal kingdom. Lord, let your loving kindness be upon them who put your, their trust in you. We pray to you also for the forgiveness of our sins. Have mercy upon us, most merciful, merciful Father. Father. In your compassion, in your compassion forgive, us forgive us our sins known and unknown, things done and left undone. And so uphold us by your Spirit, that we may live and serve you in newness of life, to the honor and glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you, forgive you all of your sins through our Lord Jesus Christ, strengthen you in all goodness, and by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep you in eternal life. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. If you've happened upon our service today and are new to St. John's, we hope you'll take a moment to fill out our online welcome card. You can find that on our website or on the Facebook chat. Today, we're going to celebrate the ministry of the St. John's Book and Gift Store, which has touched so many lives over these past 20 years. In ministry, as in life, there are seasons. And now, while we mark the end of the bookstore ministry, we celebrate the faithfulness of our bookstore managers, volunteers, and guests who supported this vital way to connect to God and neighbor. I speak to you as one who may not well be a priest in God's church if it were not for the kindness of bookstore staff members who recommended books that changed my life. Books from the St. John's bookstore transformed my life in ministry and conversations, most importantly, with managers and volunteers and guests have inspired my faith. Today, we celebrate 20 years of a job well done. Now, in normal times, we'd be able to thank staff members like Gina Proctor, our most recent manager in person, but these are not normal times. So let me take a moment to express my gratitude to Gina, who brought her retail expertise, a keen eye for meaningful gifts and books, and a wonderful collaborative spirit and sense of humor. As the church faced the challenges of the COVID-era retail world, the vestry had to make the difficult but necessary decision to discontinue the ministry. Please join me at home in thanking Gina for her leadership, and at home you can clap, you can send messages in the chat screen, or you can send Gina texts and emails of gratitude for her hard work. Gina, we love you. And we are so grateful for your service to God and our community. At this time, I'd like to offer a prayer that remembers all of our managers, volunteers, 
and guests. So friends at home, please join me in prayer. Gracious God, we are called to read, mark, and inwardly digest your word. We give thanks for the St. John's Book and Gift Store and its 20 years of ministry that provided a place for all of this to happen. We are thankful for the many hands that volunteered in the bookstore to greet guests warmly as they came to find that perfect gift. And we give thanks for the managers through the years who have lent their vision and passion to guide this bookstore's purpose. And we give thanks also for each person who were able to be met where they were on their spiritual journey with a friendly smile and the perfect gift or book. We thank you for all of your labor, saying with Jesus, well done, thou good and faithful servants. And we ask God's blessing as we continue to discern our next steps for the missions of St. John's. Amen. Well, we hope all of you will join us after the service for Coffee Talk as we celebrate the, the bookstore ministry during that time together. And the link for Coffee Talk is below, or it can also be found at our Church at Home webpage. We have lots of great Coffee Talks coming up in the month of August. Next Sunday, the 23rd, you're going to get a sneak peek of the new St. John's website. On August 30th, that will be our Back to School 2020 celebration where we're going to have inspirations from our past for this uncertain school year ahead. We'll have a multi-generational panel of St. John's parishioners who are going to share stories of memorable teachers and back to school experiences. We're also going to perform a blessing of the devices, very important this year as many students study digitally. This is a very important date and time that I want you to circle on your calendars. We're so excited to announce a special celebration on Sunday, August 30th, the last Sunday in August, Sunday the 30th at 4 p.m., we're going to be celebrating our very own director of music, Dr. Betsy Calhoun. She has been a part of St. John's music ministry for 30 years. And we're going to celebrate her ministry and her leadership with a special evening liturgy that will include an original composition by Richard Webster. He is the director of music and organist at Trinity Church in Boston. And all of that special music will be in honor of Betsy. It promises to be a moving and joyous event. More details on this celebration will be available soon. And of course, that will happen virtually, but it is going to be amazing. Remember the words of our Lord Jesus Christ who says it's a happier thing to give than it is to receive.
Please stand if you're able at home and join me in praying the Lord's Prayer and the prayer for the human family. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. O God, you have made us in your own image and redeemed us through Jesus, your son. Look with compassion on the whole human family Take away the arrogance and hatred which infect our hearts. Break down the walls that separate us. Unite us in bonds of love. And work through our struggle and confusion to accomplish your purposes on earth, that in your good time, all nations and races may serve you in harmony around your heavenly throne. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Go in peace, remember the poor, be kind to one another in the love of Christ, and in your words and in your deeds, let freedom ring, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God.